Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you today, whether you have been here a long time or whether you're just a new visitor with us. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. This is, I'm April Failer. I'm one of the pastors here, and Brady Johnston is also one of the pastors here sitting up front with us. Um, also, to our online congregation, welcome here as well. If you would please um, welcome each other in the comments section as well. And if you have any prayer requests that you would like for us to know about, please let us know in those comments uh, so that we can find a way to reach out to you as well. And for those of you who are brand new to this service, um, we would love for you um, to go ahead and scan this uh, this QR code and fill out that information so that we can keep track of you and we can let you know. Um, we can find some way to get back in touch with you. And these are for brand new people that have never been here before. Um, go ahead and, and scan that QR code. That would be awesome. We also know that today it is an amazing day because we are here in this place. We get an option, a, a beautiful opportunity to worship inside this church. We have recently experienced the resurrection. We know that we are blessed to be here amongst each other. So knowing that whatever you've arrived with in this morning, any concerns that you might have, any uh, upsets that you might have felt before you step in here, any, anything you may have seen, anything that concerns you, set it aside. Because this morning is the morning, this is the day, this is the time that you stepped into worship. And it's time for you to expect to experience the presence of God in this place. So let us begin our worship this morning. Good morning, church. You probably tell there's a different sound this morning. We're very, very blessed to have a new board up top and where we can serve our not only our congregation here, but our online congregation where we can do more things with things. And so we're just here to praise God from whom all blessings flow. So just thanks to our AV team this week of getting everything ready for us this morning. But with that, let us stand and rejoice, ye pure in heart. Yeah. 
faith together this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sunday. Um, and, and not only has she worked in the nursery, what's really neat about her story was that her mom first started working in the nursery, and Penny joined her uh, in working in the nursery there. And then Penny's daughter ended up serving in the nursery as well. So it's a you know, generational thing, and they've been a part of raising up our children and, and blessing our church for so long. So I really want to give praise to God and thanks for her service and just years of of time with us, and maybe she helped raise up some of your young ones. So um, we just want to give God thanks for that as we go into prayer together. Would you pray with me? Jesus, it's with great joy that we gather here as your people. Uh, we, we are here because of all that you have done to welcome us into your family. Where we were once separated, you, Jesus, came and gave your own life that we might have life through you. You have come to bring us, to reconcile us back into the Father. And we are so grateful uh, that, Lord, we can sit here with confidence that we are your children. And, and it's with great joy that we revisit the salvation that you've given us. And we just say thank you, thank you, thank you. you know, we also, Lord, want to celebrate the call upon your church to be servants. How grateful we are for all of those who heed the call to serve. And whether they are in ways that we might call big or small, uh, we are grateful for everyone who listens to your voice and steps with obedience into a call to be a part of your work. And we want to celebrate Penny and, and 18 years of faithful service with our young ones. You know, being a part of, of raising them up and doing that, you know, sometimes a seemingly small task, but very significant ones. Uh, laying a foundation, God, for your grace to be experienced among our youngest. And we are reminded, Jesus, of your words, who, when you told us, uh, for those who serve um, the least, um, I am there also. Uh, and so we just thank you for her. Uh, we are mindful, Lord, as your church, that, that servanthood is a part of your very nature. You know, Jesus, when you came to be among us, you said you came not as one who, who asked to be served, but to serve and to give your life as a ransom for many. And Jesus, if you came and laid down for us a pattern of service, of a humility that we could, that could force us to get to our knees and, and wash the feet of a broken world, may we as your church assume that same posture that attitude of giving of ourselves, that we might reflect your love, to reflect your, your heart, your patience, your kindness. We pray our ears, the ears of everyone listening, whether online or in person, would be open 
listening, Lord, for ways that we can truly be your people. Uh, we love you and we pray this all in the great name of Jesus Christ. One of the ways we celebrate you, Jesus, is by remembering the prayer and the way that you taught us as your disciples how to pray. And so we share that together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our prayer response to him is Alleluia. Please join me in singing. Scripture this morning is from Ecclesiastes 9, or 4, 9 through 12. And it reads, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's an old pocket watch that hangs in a cabinet in my, my mother's house. It's been in there for generations. If it's wound up appropriately, it can still keep good time. It has often been said that a pocket watch can tell a story about a family because it's passed down from generation to generation, father then to son. And sometimes it carries a memory etched in the back of it an inscription that often found in the back of that watch, a birth date, a marriage date, 
a date that's returned from the war. It's usually something you want the receiver of the watch to celebrate. Now, the great thing about pocket watch makers is that they know the ins and the outs of that watch so well that they can tell how they are ticked and talked, right? How the internal gears are shifting, how well their watch was telling time. And they wouldn't even have to open up the back of the watch to know that. They could hear what gear was shifting too slowly. They could hear what gear was shifting too quickly, what spring was not engaged enough. And they knew their watches so well that they knew what they needed to keep better time. Now, the good news about these pocket watch makers is that they appreciate the details and the ins and outs of how it works, and they believe in maintaining the time piece is time well spent. He sees the value in taking his time to get to know the pieces he built, and no matter how old the timepiece was, he cherished the opportunity to work with it to ensure that it keeps good time. Now, at the very beginning of our relationships, we're just as detail-focused as this pocket watchmaker is, as he cares for his watches. We want to know what makes the other person tick. We're actively seeking to learn who this other person is and what we have in common with them. And this usually takes some time to discover. Or at least we hope it does. But sometimes it takes a little longer for some of us than it does for others. Now, I'll give you an example of what it might happen given the quickness of it all. A lot of people try to get there ahead of time, and it's a little too quick. And for me, when I was divorced, I had been married for 10 years. I was in my late 20s. Yes, do the math. I was single again without a clue about how to date. I just know it took time, but as a statistics professor at that time, I was certain I could make the process more efficient, so I developed a dating survey that I would give the most important information I knew I needed in the fastest way possible. And now I knew I, I had to throw in some conversation in there, and, and maybe I could make it work, and maybe I could have those questions that, so it wouldn't be completely awkward. It was completely awkward. <laughs> But I usually had all the data I needed to process this by the end of the second date, because there usually wasn't a third one. <laughs> and of course, for me, all of this really stopped when I dated a fellow mathematician that also had a survey <laughs> that he used on me. And I realized how awkward a survey for dating really was. And there was absolutely no connection being made there. But when people today, we're often in a hurry to get into relationships, aren't we? Because being without one hurts too much. Being alone is not popular. So people, they, they skip the getting to know part. They, they skip getting to know the intimate details, even and kind of jump straight into the romance and sometimes right in the bed. Skipping the building of the friendship means there's really no foundation built to support the ins and outs of a marriage going forward. But this is what's normal in the dating world today. This is why the divorce rate is still over half the marriages and climbing, from what I understand. And friendship is the foundation of every relationship we will ever have. It's here where we get vulnerable. It's here where we get really uncomfortable. It's here where we learn to trust the other person. It's here where we learn about intimacy, a true closeness to someone else that has nothing to do with sex at all. It's here where we learn to love with all the strength that we can muster in that moment. And as Christ-like as we can, given what we know about Christ in that moment. 
Now, the more we learn about how to give and receive love, the stronger our ability to love others becomes. Because I can tell you, at 19, when I got married the first time, my understanding of love is very different than when I got married the second time in my 30s. The more we learn about grace and forgiveness, the stronger our love becomes for others. The more we learn how to love and think with the mind of Christ, the more our friendships can become a pursuit of Christian holiness. Now that's something we've been talking about over the past several Sundays. That the whole point of marriage, and I would say the whole point of friendships, is to pursue Christian holiness. So the more we learn how to love and to think with the mind of Christ, the more our friendships can become a pursuit of Christian holiness, especially if our friendships actually extend into marriage. That we can hold things sacred in those relationships. The love that we have runs deep and sacrificing the ones that we love. This friendship is a basic foundation of every relationship we will ever have with another, including the one we have with Christ. Now that may sound funny, but getting to know Christ is part of being a Christian. Getting to understand who Christ is and who we are in Christ is important to being a Christian. And our foundation of being a disciple is based on our connection to who Christ is and who we are in Christ. Friendship requires our attention to deepen and strengthen the foundation over time. And the reason that friendship requires our time and investment is because it often becomes the battleground where life happens. It's where real life meets the time that we've spent getting to know our friends and they've been spending getting to know us. It's where real world circumstances like addiction and adultery meets the trust and intimacy that we have with our friends. We call them for support because we feel that we have that kind of relationship that will support us through that. And we pray that we've invested enough in that relationship where they can support us through the hardest times. And the question becomes in the back of our minds, have we invested enough of our time and ourselves in these relationships to withstand life when things get tough? Now, for many of you, you've had lifelong friendships. They're rare and they're beautiful that you can count on people at the drop of a hat. That is a beautiful and a rare thing. Because this is where things get complicated, especially when we're married. Though most of us began our relationships with spouses as friends first, over time the friendship part of the marriage has taken a back seat. And it may be seasonal, you know, with the care of children or a sick loved one. It may be in a situation where it's caused by a busy schedule. Now, I can say this and mean it. If any of you have ever seen my calendar, I tried putting it into my phone, and it doesn't fit. And when I finally got it into my phone, my phone died. (laughs) I don't trust my phone anymore with my calendar. And if you've ever opened up my calendar, it is color-coded. I have at least seven color codings. From church, to other organizations that I'm part of, to children, to doctor's appointments, physical therapy, all of those things. I have color-coded in there, including date night. Now, it's funny, I hear giggling. I have to schedule that stuff in. And somebody told me once, they said, 
where do you schedule your downtime? I said, that's my date night. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? You have to schedule all that stuff in. They said, well, how do you get any, how do you get everything done? I'm like, scheduling. They said, oh, your schedule's full. But you have to make time for these types of things because this is where things get complicated. Though things may be seasonal, the friendship is the cornerstone of your marriage and it depends on friendship to maintain that balance and stability in the relationship. So for the couples that are here this morning, I have a question for you. How long has it been since you and your spouse laughed together? See, I can't see your expressions through your masks. You're okay. <laughs> I don't really know how long it's been because I can't see anything from here down. So you can look at me and I don't know. But that's a good question. It's a good indicator. Have you laughed about things lately? Have you sat down and talked about things lately? And that means for friends, too. How long has it been since you've sat down and talked to a friend until you laughed? And when was the last time you had a date night just with the two of you? It's also an important question. Maybe a difficult question to answer sometimes. And when was the last time you talked about real life things unscheduled? About things that are important to you without them being scheduled things. It's an important indicator that things need to take some time to strengthen that friendship. So we know that the marriage may strain with a lack of attention given to and from both or one side of the relationship. It happens. The friendship the marriage is built upon will support the marriage while the strain lifts during the better times. This happens. Good times, bad times. It's called marriage. This is what happens. And it also may mean that you've uncovered an opportunity to strengthen your marriage by rekindling your friendship, by investing more time and yourself with your spouse than before. You might find out you've got a limited time to invest yourself in. And I don't like looking at things like this because it means that we all have a limited amount of time and I still believe that I have infinite amount of time to do things, but I don't. You've got to figure out where your relationships are in this infinite pie chart. Because it's not infinite. And we forget how much time we spend strengthening those relationships can get lost. You know, when you spend so much time thinking about relationships inside the Bible, especially in today's culture, you start looking at the differences between, you know, how, they, how we value relationships. You can see, for example, you know that today's um, marriages and relationships are completely different than the ones in the biblical times. I mean, you can see how the culture of the biblical times, that women's relationship um, with men are very different. The marriages are very different. We know that, for example, when you look at marriage in the context of the culture in biblical times, a woman's value was defined by the man that she married and by the male heirs that she could provide him to inherit the estate. Now, I don't think there's anything that we can argue about that. That was a value of women at that moment. In today's world, a woman's value wasn't dependent on her husband, but her own kind of life and her own individual status or her own career. But the interesting part about it is I read this. There's a book that Timothy Keller wrote and he found something in the Bible that I thought was interesting and kind of counterintuitive to what we might think of as friendship. Timothy Keller was quoted as saying, Proverbs 2, 17 speaks of one spouse as a loop, which is a, a, a Hebrew word that's unique in defining what a relationship is, a marriage is, in terms of one's special confidant. So for him, he actually found a word that was describing a relationship in terms of a best friend or companionship. 
So while we may value romance and sex far more than anything else in our marriages right now, the Bible puts great emphasis on marriage as companionship in Proverbs 2, 17. It surprised me. So when I find this kind of irony, I have to step back and check myself. I have to ask myself questions about where I am. When was the last time you checked to see how your loved ones were ticking? Do you know what's going on in their lives? The ones that you love the most. Because the, busy you, the busier you are, the more value, valuable your investment in their lives will be. Coming to appreciate those details again opens that door to reconnection and strengthens that friendship over and over again. The most powerful part about marriage for me has been the ability to make mistakes and to ask for forgiveness and to still get it over time. And more than anything else, the mess ups that I have made has been because I haven't respected that friendship. I worked too much. Or I forgot about disappointment. Or I didn't do this part. And that's the most important piece that we have that we base our marriages on that keep us together over time. So the strength of our marriages are only as strong as our friendships can allow them to be. And they are worth the investment. Let us pray. Lord, guide us in this. Show us the way. We know how important relationships are. We know how important friendships are, but... Sometimes we get in a hurry and we take things for granted. Strengthen us, Lord. Allow us to see the details in other people's lives. Allow us to be part of the lives of people we love the most. Help us to know when and where we can invest our time that we can remain part of the lives of those that we love. Teach us to invest in those that we care about the most. Keep our hearts open. Allow us to see them where they are. Allow us to know them for who they are. Give us the knowledge and the, the skill of the pocket watchmaker so that we can see them for who they are and what's going on with them and, and we can be the strength that they need us to be so that all of us can continue to grow in our relationship together so that we all can continue to grow in our but love for each other and so that we can all continue to grow in our faith and continue to, to love as you have taught us to love and to give the grace that you have taught us to give to others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's stand together as we sing. Take time to be holy. There are a few announcements today. Today we know that we are working on both of the parsonages from 2 to 5 p.m. So if you are interested in helping, we've got some things we need to do to before the sale of these parsonages. So please help us. I don't know if Grant Hewson is here today at this moment. No? Okay. So if you can find um, Brady, he's one of them. Grant Hewson is one of those folks as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Um, if you want to see me right after this, we can find out some information for you. So from 2 to 5 p.m. is when we'll be working on those parsonages because we want to sell those parsonages to help us get out of debt Woo! in this church. I know, it's wonderful. So go ahead and um, let us know if you would like to be part of that because we need your help. Also, we are looking to understand what, um, what you guys think about going to Israel in 2022 to take a trip, a trip that we took uh, this last time in 2020 was wonderful, and Fred and Carol made that happen. Where's Fred Smith? There he is right there. There's the man that is, um, we're wanting to find out if you would like more information about it, uh, find out if you have any interest in going. It is an awesome trip, absolutely great food, great place to stay, um, and the, the person that um, he has as our guide is awesome. If you would like more information about that or you're curious about that trip, please see Fred right after the service, and he can give you more information about that. Also know that if this is your first time here, we do have, um, uh, for first-time guests, we do have shirts in the back um, for you. And so please, I'm glad you've come, and, and go ahead and check out the shirts. And probably one of the last things I'd like to tell you guys about more than anything else, we've got... We have started a relationship um, with the hospital, and one of the things that we're doing is we're putting together 250 gift uh, bags for the employees there to show our appreciation for how awesome they've been to us. So there's three things we're looking for, and that is thank you notes to let them know how awesome they've been for us and how we love the fact that they are there and taking care of our community. We are looking for $10 gift guards from the local restaurants to encourage them to eat during their, <laughs> during their shifts. And also, 
If you feel led to provide any cash donations so that we can help fill those, ga those um, gift bags, please let us know. We've got boxes here and one that's back there. So if you have anything with you that you would like to donate, feel free to put them in those boxes. Um, we also have a box for cards right outside the office, um, office door. And the office will be open Monday through Thursday if you would like to drop off any cash donations or um, any of the gift cards. Or if you'd like to put the, the thank you cards in somebody's hand, you certainly can from Monday to Thursday of this week. So as we are gathered at the end of this service, friendships are precious. They are rare. They are beautiful and they are sacred. They give us the strength of life and it's through each other that we learn and know who God is. And it's when these people gather together around us that we understand God's presence. So as you leave this place today, give the people that you love a call just to let them know how much you care about them. Remind them that you care about them. Because sometimes all it takes for that watch to start kicking in it's just to wind it. Remind them that you care. And that's where all the strength and the faith and the love can do a lot of good. It's just a word from you. And I say this in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal.